Pigglesworth. Welcome back to AlphaCraft. Whoa, Biz joined the game. <laughs> right on my intro. Welcome, sir. <laughs> good timing, good timing. We are over here in the carrot patch, the, the potato patch, the wheat patch. We're over here at the garden, which is in a bad spot, I tell you. Now, when I first started, no problem. Part of the experience. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, when we first set this, uh, this uh, garden up, it was, you know, central to where we're working. It's central to the area so we could get food real quick. Just run through here and do all this. But I tell you what, I got work to do. Piggy's always got work to do. And having to come over here and deal with these gardens all the time, that's for the birds, which we don't have in Minecraft except for parrots. Mojang, we need birds. And not bats. I'm done with bats. Make them go away. <laughs> But these farms, these farms have now become a nuisance. They are smack dab in the middle of this lower court area that we want to start working on. And uh, they need to get moved. But we also need a food source. But we also need a way to get food without having to like deal with the fact that you have to come over and manually work with food. So I got to thinking about it. I do have an ender pearl. I'm going to go ahead and just save it. I was going to, well, yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> Uh-oh. I got my little light level tester. There we go. Hit F7. We'll make that go away. Oh, and the sun is about to go down. So we're probably going to have to take a quick little nap. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pop my head out here and then we will uh, we'll come back and, and, and take a sleep as my son used to say when he was five. I have to take a sleep now. <laughs> oh, minecart, you're so noisy. Let's go ahead and shut the minecart off. There's no point in you running right now. Because it's been a little while since I've had to come over here and chop some trees. I have got plenty of wood stored up. Look at this. I went ahead and got... Now it's almost. But I went ahead and tried to get as close to a double chest of each type of log as possible. And then we got tons of leaves. And uh, got a fair bit of saplings going on. Some of these are easier to get than others. But we got saplings. Yes, I'm wasting time. I'm biding my time. So that we don't end up with a bunch of bad guys when I when I try to show you what in the world we're doing. But we're going down the path that leads to what we would call the work area, for lack of a better word. This side of the base seems to have been developing where we've got the snow factory, we've got the tree farm, and now I figure let's just go ahead and put some food farms over here as well. But I had to sit and think about it for a minute. How do we make these food farms interesting to look at, still functional, and fit the theme of what we got going on here and I think I've come up with a new idea that's going to be that's going to have just a really cool effect once we're finally done. I've also got these torches. These torches are going to mean something in a minute. So, <clears throat> the reason one of the reasons why as we've been adding on to the mountainside that I have not continued it to this spot is because I wasn't quite sure where the actual edge of the base was going to be. We've got this really nice uh, pre-rendered uh, mountain piece that was already here. So I figured, you know, if we have to incorporate it, if the bounds go to that edge, then that will be great because that's already there. And now that I've come up with this idea, it looks like we might actually end up needing that, at least for the exterior. I don't think we'll need it for the interior. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to extend this road and it's going to arc over that way. It's eventually going to make a, uh, like a half circle, and it's going to poke back through this mountain and go back into the base. And this should give us plenty of area to do everything that I want to do. Now, what I like to do is uh, when I'm trying to visualize spaces and where things go, speaking of, let me get my notes opened up there. I like to lay things out and kind of get a, a, an idea of where things are going to go. Now, we could do it with path blocks, but the problem is with path blocks, once you make the path block... If you messed up, you've got to break the block. You've got to go get some grass blocks, put those down, and then make a new path block. Torches is a really great way to use to map out your idea. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of experimenting a little bit with what might be a path. A path, a path. With a, with some shrubberies down the middle for a split level of effect. <laughs> See, we got a little bit of a winding path coming through here. 
Oop, look, and we're going into the warp zone again. And I think I'm going to stop for, for right here for now because I'm not quite certain where in this area we need to curve back inwards. I think it's supposed to be right about where that cow is because we've got the ice tray right up there, but I'm not 100% certain yet because I get the feeling that more than likely the ice farm is going to go right in this area. And so, you know, because it, it fits with the theme of the snow factory. We got an ice farm right next to it. That elevation is perfect for an ice farm. And we've got a whole mountainside area that we can hide a bunch of stuff inside. So I don't want to commit yet to saying this is where the path goes, but I get the feeling that this is where the path goes. <laughs> now, another thing I'm thinking about now that I'm looking at how this is laid out, I was going to do this where we walk in and you can see stuff on this side. But we have got quite a bit of space over here. But see, that's the other thing. Maybe I don't want to commit to putting something so... Oh, you'll come here. So close up against this. It almost looks like a little face with a mouth. <laughs> I know, I'm always seeing these faces. So uh, The owl face that we got in here. Which the trees are totally blocking. So way to run that joke. Um... And then, and then this, like a little robot face or something. I don't know what that would be. Maybe a cactus. A cactus with a weird face. A cactar from Final Fantasy. That's what it is. But I got this road going through here. So I've got these uh, areas that I want to build that are going to be for uh, for food. They're going to be like cages. But they're, but the, the, the simple idea is I've got a path going through here with these big box cages. And inside each box cage is a farm. Okay, that's the simple part. Now I got to add the wow factor and the wow factor should make it a little bit cooler than just the simple part. So the first thing is the, the path of the road, I want to leave about eight blocks in total for the space that the road is going to go on. Let's go and call this the extreme edge and we'll work our way this way. That way we don't have to go too far out. Okay, so let's, let's see this right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the other thing I like about torches is say you needed to designate i want something six blocks wide you put six six torches in your hand you don't even count there there's six blocks right there it's so quick and easy it's almost like a like like a ruler that you can make with a set designated amount of spaces and then you just whoosh, spam it out and there you go you've made your measurement like a giant measuring tape so about eight blocks wide is how we want to do for the path and then the space from the path to the cages. See, see, it's a good thing we're laying this out because I've, I think I've already figured out we're going to run out of space real quick. I want a seven block minimum gap. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll drop one of those off. Yep. I need a seven block gap between the path and these cages and then the cage is 15 blocks deep. So here's what we need to do. And see, this is why it's good to have this measuring tape. And it's good to lay out all this stuff before you do it. So it's going to be 15 deep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I've got some dirt blocks, which is good. We can use those for measurement. So let's do this. Let's go as far. Not as far. We'll get pretty close. So this is going to be the 15 blocks for the cage. Yeah, we're get we're definitely getting closer already. Okay. And then we're going to put a block for a marker. Let's do 7 for the gap between the path and look at that. Look how close we got. You can see that cage is going to be right there. Mhm. Mm Planning with piggy numbers and all that good stuff. 3 4 5 6 7 8. 8 is what we said for the path. So let's do another marker right here. And we're just going to, I'm not even going to bother counting. I'm so tempted to count, but we can't. So now we've got a little bit of a problem, a little conundrum here, where this would immediately turn right. And I don't want that. I want a little bit of curvature to it. But here's the great thing. We overbuilt this just a bit. Quite a bit, actually. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven blocks right here. So we can cut some of this out to give a little bit of curvature to our path. Because the other thing that's selling the idea of these caves and whatnot is we've got curves going on. It's not 
straight angular pieces. Angular pieces would make you think more like somebody purposefully dug into the mountain and cut that area, which we may use at some point, but right here I don't want that. I want this to be curved. So what I'm going to have to do is tear up all of these, uh, these little path pieces right here that we started with and just kind of rearrange it. And I know, I know, I've spent quite a few minutes doing this, but I thought it's important to show this because this could be a cool, interesting tool that you could use if you're playing in survival. Heck, you could probably do it if you're playing in creative. I've used that tool as well in creative. But it's a good way to help you kind of visualize the area that something's going to take up, how big it's actually going to be, and what what you need to do to prep an area to get ready. <clears throat> Now, eventually, the way this stuff is going to be built and the way it's going to look, it's going to be very dangerous to try and build it if I do the second part first and the first part second, which will make sense when both parts are finally done. So what I'm going to do today is we're just going to work with this very raw outer area right here. We're not going to really prep the area any more than some torches and stuff, but we're going to get to building these things because once we get these things going, we're going to have to get things to go into things so that the things work. See how that works? And look, now I know why I had two dirt blocks in my hand. And some of y'all are probably screaming, Piggy, Piggy, don't use the dirt blocks yet. You need them, buddy. <laughs> there we go. We're safe and sound. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go through and do a little bit more site prep with the torches just to make sure I've got my area laid out just right. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start building. We're going to start building an area so we can relocate all of our farms and then we don't have to worry about manual farming anymore. All right. So y'all just sit tight. I'm going to gather up all that stuff and then we're going to meet back over there at the job site. So I came over here to get some wood. I thought I would kind of walk you through this design process because I know what I want in my head, but I can't quite seem to get it to come out the way I want in this area and so i'm just kind of meddling with things a little bit just kind of experimenting and trying out a few things i thought you know what let's do this on camera let's show people you know but it's good to see other people's methods and how they work things out sometimes it gives you a new idea or sometimes you can put in the comment section below hey peggy why don't you try this instead of that you would have sped up the process or you would have not rabbit trailed so badly <laughs> Now, what I want this to look like is some kind of a suspended draw, not draw bridge, but like a suspended bridge. But I also need to keep it spawn proof, which means I can only work with upper half slabs and I can only work with stairs. Now, you're not really ever going to be able to see the underside of this, so I'm not too concerned about the bottom of it. Like, we're never going to stand afar and look at this bridge and see a profile and say, hmm, that does or that doesn't look suspension-ish. I mean, we kind of will from here, but I'm also going to do this. I'll show you this. So we're going to put vertical spruce logs. And let's see here. I'll, I'll come back and dig out this dirt later. These are more just placeholders so that I can make sure that these logs stand upright. And then we'll come back through. We're going to make these all strip logs. Now, right now, you notice, whoop, I can step right on top of them. Nothing stops me. Nothing's going to stop me now. So if I do this, cap it off, it still looks very squat. It doesn't look nearly as tall as a full block. But look. I can't walk off the edge. So as long as I don't come barreling through here, running and jumping and go like that, as <laughs> long as I don't, don't pull that stunt, everything will be fine. And then you can see what I mean. When you get to this edge, you can't, you know, it kind of holds you at a bit of an angle. So when I get to this edge, We'll be able to see right here. I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining it well enough. But the thing is, what I'm getting at is this angle, this droop, it's just not working. I don't think it's working out the way that I really want it to. So I just think we need to tear this out. If you've got a better suggestion or idea what might have made a better droop, um, you can do it. You can, I, I know, trying to explain it in the chat uh, comment section is going to be kind of 
difficult, if not near impossible. But there's two options. You can you can build an idea in a creative world, and you can tweet the image to me, or you can join me in my Discord channel, and you can send me the image there as well. So there you go. You come hang out with Piggy. Come meet a whole, <coughs> a whole bunch of group of people that's all hanging out together. And show me your idea at the same time. But I think what I want to do is I want to have this come out like this. And then I'm just going to turn and go straight for a bit. Maybe, I don't know, let's try about 15. <clears throat> oh man, I got like a catch in my throat. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12, 13, 14, 15. Now you can eat the carrot, Piggy. You got to do the work first before you eat the carrot. Sitting there trying to eat it while you're supposed to be working. Let's go ahead and just extend this out. And then extend this out. Now as I get more of this built, it's going to start to make a little bit more sense why I've got these little circular segments. Now one thing I wanted to do was I wanted it to be like a transition between the angled pieces of platform and the straight. So it looks like the angled is one type of segment and then it comes to the circular part and then it moves on. And maybe what we need to do to define that is to give this circular thing a definite border all the way around. Does that sell this as its own plank? Because right now, with the, all the spruce wood together, it looks solid. I don't know. I think that looks a little better. It kind of breaks it up a little bit and makes it look like it's at least a segment. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still kind of on the fence about it because it's just it's not working out the way that I envisioned in my head and sometimes this can be a little frustrating so you just have to like stop and keep retrying this can go away now this was way way back when we first started working over here and I think I needed a way to get away from um pillagers and stuff when we were experimenting with that what I'm going to need to do is go through and put a dirt trim on this or not like I'll need to do that so that I can go ahead and get this, this, these logs and this border set up and the sun's about to not cooperate. So I'm going to get that as well. And I think I'm going to dig, let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to dig these down. So that way, if for some weird reason, something happens, see, I can jump and get up here, but no mob is going to do that. No mob is going to be smart enough to jump like old piggy. So no matter what, I can leave this open. This area is spawn proof, so we're good to go with that respect. And I can work on stuff out here, and I don't have to worry about bad guys making their way into the base and blowing up all the nice, pretty stuff that we got going on. So, son, since you forced my hand, <laughs> I'm going to have to go sleep the night away. But I'm going to keep working a little bit with this, trying to figure out what I want to do. And then we're going to lay out the area of where I want these cages. We need at least one cage for carrots, for potatoes, for beets, and for wheat. Now the problem with wheat is it's gonna get auto-converted into bread, but I think that's okay. Um, if I need a specific wheat farm, we can always build one of those later. So I'm gonna need four of these cages. So we might do like one right here, one right there, one right there, and maybe to mix it up, we could put the fourth one right there. That might be a cool idea. Just so you know, when you walk through here, you see one, two, three, and then there's one right there. So it just doesn't feel like, you know, I don't know what the right word is I'm looking for. But it just just trying to stay in that mindset of organic you want to avoid patterns. You want to avoid repetition. So three over here and one over here kind of makes sense. Like maybe maybe they had enough room over here to put these cages, but they ran out of some space, so they built one over here. Now I know, I know. <laughs> I can envision in my head what it is I'm talking about and what I'm trying to do, and you all are going, Piggy, this is making no sense. Just build the thing so we can see what you're talking about. So that's what I'm going to do. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and sleep. I'm going to work a little bit more on this, this area right here. And I'm going to set up the, uh, the pads where the different farms will go. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what in the world am I talking about. 
and then we'll get to start trying to finish this project for today. All right, so I'm asleep and I'll meet you right back over there. Alrighty, I have been busy at work and I've gotten a little bit of stuff done. I've got a path, goes all the way around, doesn't go all the way around, but it arcs around, and I've got four platforms. Now I know, I know in the previous clip I said I was going to have three platforms here and one over here, but I got to thinking as I built this, I'm just kind of, just hear me out, okay? Stop rioting, settle down, let me explain. <laughs> So as I built these platforms, I started realizing how big they were and how they set next to each other. Like I designed one of these in creative just to get an idea of how I wanted it to look, but I didn't understand it in context to other things and, uh, you know, just size of land and how much area it took, takes up. So originally I had this platform here and I had this one over about right here. And then I started building the third one right about there. And they just look so crowded. And I want this area to be grandiose. I want it to feel huge and giant. And putting these big cages next to each other so close is really going to mess up the effect. So I thought about it. I'm like, you know what we can do? There's more than four types of food. So, you know, I think we're okay. So I went in and did carrots, beets, potatoes, and wheat. Now, we've still got uh, two kinds of mushrooms. We've got sugarcane. We have got um, uh, bamboo. We've got melons and pumpkins. Um, something else. I can't think of it. There, there's quite a few other foods that can, can be grown. And 1.16 is just around the corner. So there's even more stuff coming. So there's plenty of organic things that we can build um, farms to put in this area. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have this pathway come over here. I arced it a little bit this way. We're going to make it go straight this way till about right here. Turn it at a 45 a little bit more. And then once it gets over in that area, we'll turn it and make it go straight through the mountain. And that'll be somewhere over where the, uh, the ice farm will eventually be. So that's going to leave us quite a bit of area on uh, still over here on this side. And all along this side, we've got like this whole, sorry that I'm running around a bit. might be making you sick watching me do this. <laughs> but this whole mountain hill thing right here can be pulled out and stuff can be built right there. So we've got room to expand and work. It's no big deal. I was just worried about everything not looking balanced. But like I said, as I started to build it, it really started to get crowded. And I didn't even need to go over here. I want to show you this little trick. I kind of accidentally figured this out while I was building uh, these platforms. Now, you all might have seen this before. Somebody else might have done this. I've never seen it. So to me, it was a big deal. But, you know, that's the way it goes. You always think it's a big deal. And then somebody else goes, Piggy, everybody's been doing that, buddy. Now, I will say I was quite impressed that a few people's response to me having that waterfall over there the way I did it, they were quite impressed. It looks like I might, might have actually done a first. <laughs> we'll see, though. Somebody eventually is going to post a comment said, so-and-so has been doing that since since 114 came out, Piggy. Get with the times. But, yeah, y'all seem to enjoy it. That's all that matters. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to build this platform. We've got four blocks a water source and four blocks. Now I know there's ways like I could take these upside down stairs and I could flip them over and water log them. And that would optimize the amount of water we've got going on here. I'm not too worried about that. I, I like the design more than anything. Now what we might end up doing if we really, really want a water log like that is flip the corners right side up and then water log them. But we'll have to see how it looks. Because we got to build the rest of the build and then see if we see these little blue corners right here. It might look a little funky. It might mess up the look a little bit. But we'll experiment it. We'll figure it out. I'm not too worried about these being the most optimal, most efficient farms. Um, because me just farming the food myself, I've got plenty of food to eat. I, I, we got carrots to burn. So, um, you know, we make these things too efficient. And then we've got a bunch of leftover stuff we got to deal with. But we're going to put this composter here in the middle. I'm going to put the sea lantern on top. And I'm going to do dirt on top of that. 
then we're going to cover this with trap doors. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is one, this color looks real weird in comparison to everything else around here. I really don't have a light source that color wise would fit really well except for uh, the lanterns and I've got a different place I want to put those. So by doing this, this is going to give me a light source for the farm. By making it too tall, it, it has just a, a little bit of a different look to it and it'll make more sense once I build the cages around this. And this gives us our composter for the villager that will eventually be farming in here. He needs a composter to see that to become a farmer. And then it just, you know, why have two light sources when one is going to work? We'll just use that dummy block right there for that. But here's the trick. So we're going to put the seeds in our offhand and we're going to put the, t the hoe in our working hand. And all I'm going to do is hold down right click. And your character will till the soil and then automatically plant a seed because there's no seed in the ground and you have a seed in your hand. Kind of works a little bit like the uh, the micro farms that people build with uh, where you have um, like a distribution device pouring bone meal into a spot and then you're holding down with, um, you're not tilling the soil anymore because it's already been tilled, but you're holding down, you know, the same stuff that you would be harvesting in your offhand and just kind of auto doing it. But I thought this was cool. This is like a nice, neat little trick when you're first starting a farm. Instead of having to till all the soil and then come back. Uh-oh. Got to have enough in your hand there, Peggy. And then after doing that, then coming back and having to replant. So, yeah, well, I almost managed to talk long enough to get the whole thing planted. Look at that. <laughs> so there we go. So now we've got wheat, wheat aplenty growing as well. So now I've got these cages to build. And I want to show you me building the cages, but it's going to be really time consuming for me to build it if you're watching it from this perspective. So we're going to we're going to try and do a times time lapse, but not a time lapse. Can you figure out what that means? A time lapse that's not a time lapse. Hmm. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some materials because I got some of these materials, but I, I got to make sure that I got enough so we can build this. So I'm going to gather up materials and get them centralized in a spot and bring them over here. And then we're going to start a cool time lapse that is not a time lapse, but it is a time lapse. So you just stick around and you tell me, you tell me in the comment section, was that a cool time lapse? Was that a time lapse that's not a time lapse? Piggy, stop it. Just do it, buddy. You're driving us crazy with all this circular talk, buddy. <laughs> All right, I tell you what, y'all just somewhere right up in that general vicinity. You just float up in that general vicinity and get ready to watch the non time lapse, time lapse, and I'll meet you right back over here. So I've got my four pads ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to build this as if it's going to be set up in the future, which will make sense in the future. So I put these little pieces at the bottom, and then we start putting the perimeter around here with some fencing. This is going to keep villagers inside and bad guys out and then we start working on this archway now once we can get this archway built we're just going to have to mirror image it on the other side and then like 90 degree turn and do a mirror image so it's basically one arc repeated on all four sides using a lot of uh, strip spruce here and then lining the we're going to line the top of it with dark oak you can see right here once we get this this little overhang done right here and that dark oak is going to give a nice little outline look but it's also going to make this spawn proof so it's nice we've got this two-tone effect going on with the uh the spruce logs right there just kind of building this up and it's very symmetrical i know a lot of the builds have been trying to avoid symmetry but with these it just kind of seemed to make sense because there's so much detail in them to go ahead and make them symmetrical so we're just going to finish up the roof line right up in here and then in the middle we're going to put this bracing piece and like i said as the as this area develops more that bracing piece is going to make a whole lot more sense so just put some cobble fences build this up and it almost looks like the uh, support legs that we have inside the cave now from underneath here, I wanted this just to kind of pop a little bit with color. So we went ahead and put some, um, some trap doors there. And then we've got these little brace pieces right here that are gonna stick off the side and they're just gonna be spread out a little bit 
threw out the uh, the pathway. Yeah, I was messing with those trap doors. <laughs> Apparently, trap doors connect to uh, the stone fences, which I had no idea they did. But here again, we're just kind of mimicking that design of the same support structure that we've got going on inside the caves. All right, we're just going to run through here. Take a look at the final product. Look at there, look at there. Man, I'm loving this. This is looking great. Got all these little platforms set up and ready to go. Got our walkway set up and ready to go. Got bracings that make no sense right now ready to go. <laughs> Just run right over here. I'll kind of show you what I did with the rest of the pathway. Went ahead and did, like I said, extend it out over here. Go ahead and make it turn. And then it'll go in there. And that, that is so weird. Look, in the, look how it's not drawing the... And now it is. And now it's gone. Now it's there. That that is so weird. Hey, creeper. How you doing? You just stay up there. Now I've spent the better part of about four different Minecraft nights running around here, fighting off zombies, fighting off skeletons. Okay, I don't have any arrows in me now, but you can see all the different mob junk that I've been gathering up. Went over and got some more carrots because I ran out. I can't get any zombie villagers to show up. The one time you want zombie villagers to show up, they don't. I guess I need spider web ninja around to catch me some zombie villagers because that's the way it seems to go. But we're going to need to catch at least two so that we can start breeding them so that we'll have enough because I need eight villagers just for these four farms right here. So that's something I'm probably going to need to do between episodes is just kind of run around, scout, see if I can get some villagers uh, that are zombified to chase me down. I'm going to get them trapped there in those little dirt boxes, and then we're going to go ahead and convert them and make them uh, regular villagers so that we can get them into these farms so that they will start harvesting crops. And then we can set up a collection system, a central point for distribution of food, and then an overflow system. So any food that we're not going to be storing or using is just automatically going to get uh, sent to like some kind of bone meal conversion farm. And then what's cool is we can pipe that bone meal conversion into an area that will eventually get sent to here so that this area right here will have a way to um, to hold on to bone meal for the tree farm. Yeah, look at that. So we can have our own uh, ecosystem going on over here. We don't have to keep running back to Spawn Central to, to gather up all the bone meal and bring it over here. Of course, that can always be there for emergencies, just in case we don't have this area loaded or something. We can always go back and get more bone meal, which would be just great. But if you enjoyed this episode, please click that like button. And if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to be, go ahead and click subscribe. And if you like YouTube to send you notifications whenever new videos come out, go ahead and click the bell. And then notifications should get sent to you in your email or on your phone or your device. However, however you've got all that stuff set up. YouTube changes about every week, so who knows how that's going to work. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can hunt me down some villagers and get those guys ready to go. Go ahead and get this area cleaned up because we have got just chest and junk everywhere. A creative explosion has happened and now it's time to clean it up. <laughs> So get all that cleaned up, get villagers ready to go, get this area a little bit more mentally prepped for next episode. And that is when I hope to see you is in the next episode of AlphaCraft.